is Aiden Wolf. When you open up uh, Adobe Audition, this is pretty much what you're going to see. It does change uh, version to version a little bit. It also changes person to person. Um, everything's usually in place and you'll see things in different spots. Uh, for example, files, this will always be open somewhere. This is where you drop anything if you want to open it. Of course, you got media browser, effects rack, markers, properties. This will usually be there, and then down here you'll have, I, I never actually use this area except for history. Uh, sometimes if I want to delete something, I'll use this area. And this is your main editor work area along with the mixer. So this is a pretty simple program through and through. Um, it, right up here, this, these buttons aren't always here. So there's two ways to actually start a project. One is by clicking waveform, okay? Uh, and the same thing will work with multi-track. You can start a multi-track or you can start a waveform or you can do here, file, new, multi-track, audio file. Now let's go through both and what each one of them are. So waveform, uh, file name, uh, let's just go Aiden Wolf. Now this is where a lot of people get confused. Sample rate 44.1 is the sample rate for most CDs. 48,000 is the sample rate for DVDs. And uh, some people, professional uh, producers, will record 96 or even 192 for very high fidelity sound. Uh, channels, this is something that came from um, an old professor of mine. He always asked, should you record in mono or stereo? And his answer was always, how many voices do you have? Do you have one? Record in mono. Bit depth, uh, always go for 16 bit. 32 float, if you record in 32 float, it may not play on certain players. 24-bit, sure, if you really want. 16-bit is the pretty much the standard across the board. So 44.1, because we're not doing DVD audio, channels, mono, and bit depth, 16. Now, when you open that up, this is going to be a mono uh, work area. And in order to record, of course, all you do is hit the record button. And this is what's going to happen. As long as you have a microphone hooked up, to your system and it's recognized this is going to be your recording path now i'm going through the re320 which has a very very small pickup pattern there i just turned it up for you okay um but all this stuff can be boosted up later so i'm not too concerned about this stuff all right so let's just get a decent file here of about 30 seconds and we're going to learn how to work on stuff there we go makes things very easy so you have this selector tool, and you've got all your tools up here. Um, this is the selector tool that I want to have. I'm not touching any of this down here. I'm just going to get rid of that right now. So this selector tool, you can use to just select anything. You just click and drag, click and drag. It makes it really easy to just select certain clicks, like this one. There. That's a click of me swallowing. <laughs> so we're going to bring that down for you. Okay. Um, there we go. We took that completely out. All we had to do was select it. And this little tool up here is a volume envelope. And you can just drag it down. So if you want it uh, down, you drag down. If you want it up, you push up. And that will actually take care of that problem instantly. Now, if you want to delete something... Let's say we just wanted to delete that whole area. We just select it and hit delete on your keyboard. Now, that selection is gone, okay? Um, oh, you know what? I got to get, see this little part? These things drive me nuts. I kiss my teeth so often. Yeah, so we're just going to, oh, well, first we're going to bring it down. So sometimes if you use a scroll ball on your, uh, on your mouse, you can scroll in really close to get to the very heart of what you want to delete or what you want to get rid of. So I scrolled up and that brought me real close to this Heath kiss that I always do. So we're just going to bring that down. Oh, see, some of it pops up again. So we're going to go take care of this one. Bring that down. Um, so this is what you're left with. Um, so it's still a little bit. Oh, so we've decided that we're going to just go in and we're going to take care of these. We're going to delete them because you know what? They won't go down enough. There we go. Okay. Um, 
So there you go. We've gotten rid of that teeth kiss. Uh, sounds a little bit better. Now, there's the other thing that I was mentioning with the dynamic mic. You notice all this stuff is really small. Uh, then you've got a big portion here. And then you back down to small. And you kind of want it all one volume so you're not blowing out people's headphones. I did mention this in a previous video. It's called massaging audio. Now, it, you can be extreme with it or you can just kind of give it a gentle touch. But generally what it is is it's bringing down all the high peaks to about the same level as kind of an average. So you could technically bring this stuff up a little bit so you're not fixing a bunch of stuff. There you go. That's kind of on average with the average of this waveform. Then you've got some big peaks here. We're going to take this one down. There we go. Now, well, okay, we got one more. Let's do the one more. There we go. There. Everything's pretty much average across the board. Now, when you listen, button. And this is what's going to happen. As long as you have a very small pickup pattern. See, you don't notice any difference on the uh, on the high points that you brought down because you're not changing that much. You're changing middles, the middle of a word or maybe the plosive at the beginning of a word, but you're not doing a lot. So now we have all of this, all one kind of nice, you got some valleys in here, but that's okay. Now what we want to do from here is we want to make this nice and full. So we want to change the difference between the extreme lows of a word and the extreme highs. So for example, in this word, you've got a high of about minus 18, actually a little bigger than minus 18. And the lows are well, somewhere around minus 21 or even minus 27. So that's a difference in that word right in here. So when you do dynamics processing, what that does is it kind of equalizes the lows and the highs of a word. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to effects, into amplitude and compression, and dynamics processing. Now the first one I go for is classic soft knee. This is kind of the go-to for uh, most radio professionals uh, and a lot of people that dabble in audio. Why? Because it's a perfect kind of band-aid over not bad audio but weak audio now when you take this you can actually see down here you've got an on off button now this will tell you what it sounds like with or without so we're going to start without board button and this is what's going to happen as long as you have a microphone hooked up to your system and it's recognized this is going to be your recording path now okay. i'm going through so now you can see the differences that it makes just by listening. So when you hit apply, you're going to notice all these little peaks and valleys are going to kind of normalize to one. Okay. And that's exactly what this is. It's a type of normalizing. So there you go. Everything got louder and you'll notice that in the words, everything's a little closer together. So some of the peaks were brought down and some of the valleys were brought up. Now you have something that's running about between minus 18 and minus 15 because this is going to be the body right through here all the little peaks up and down and you can bring it up to as loud as you need now and now this will be a piece of audio that you will be able to hear over a piece of music you know sometimes you'll place your uh your vocals in over music and the music seems to drown you out that dynamics processing is what will help you get over that music so there you go there's uh, a real quick look at uh dynamics processing and using waveform this is aiden wolf